Good evening, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us this week for our uh, continued study of 1 Corinthians. We're going to pick up in chapter 8. Um, it's not a long chapter. Uh, There's only 13 verses in it. Um, but I'd like to thank you guys for joining us. I thank all of our other teachers that's been teaching. Um, I really appreciate all the work that you're, you guys are doing and the time you're putting in. Um, I want to pick up in, in verse 1. I'm going to go ahead and read, read it, and then I'm going to stop and talk. A little bit as I go um, so maybe I can not make this thing so long <laughs> uh, let's pray Heavenly Father I thank you for your word I thank you for your spirit Lord I thank you for your love and your compassion for us Lord that you give us your word to guide us to give us your word to 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 cause us to grow and to learn of you and to learn your ways that we would walk in obedience to your word that we could be what you have called us to be. We'd be the light of this world. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pick up verse 1. I'm going to begin reading. I'm reading now the New uh, New Passion Translation. Um, now, verse 1 says this, Now let me address the issue of food offered and sacrifice to idols. It seems that everyone believes his own opinion is right on this matter. How easily, it is, how easily we get puffed up over our opinions. But love builds up the structure of our new life. Let me read that again. But love builds up the structure of our new life. We're to be guided by love. We're to be everything that we do. Our motive is because of we, our love, not only for God, but our love for one another. Our love for our brother and our sister. Um... If anyone thinks himself as a know-it-all, he still has a lot to learn. But if a person passionately loves God, he will possess he he will possess the knowledge of God. He will possess the knowledge about God and of God. Verse 4 concerning food sacrificed as offerings to idols, we all know that an idol is nothing, for there is no god but one. Although there may be many so-called gods in this world with a little g little gods um and in heaven there may be and in heaven there may be many gods lords and masters now he's not talking about the heaven where god abides but the heavens um where principalities and powers rule um that's what he's, he's not talking about the throne of god because there is only one god that he talked about in the previous verse um, verse 6, yet for us, there is only one God, the Father. He is the source of all things, and our lives are lived for him. And there is one Lord, Jesus, the Anointed One, through whom we and all things exist. There is one God. There is one Mediator. There is one Savior. There is one Son. There is one and Paul's reiterating to this church, and they, this is a church, and they were struggling with this. This is something that they were they're battling. So they debated amongst themselves. They tried to work it out amongst themselves. And you know, some people have a higher opinion than other people, and they don't put no emphasis on one another. So they say, "We'll just we'll write to Paul," and Paul addresses it. Paul is Paul's bringing it down. He's he's letting them know what is what. But verse seven. <clears throat> But not everyone has this revelation. What revelation? The one we just read in verse 6. Yet for there is one God, the Father, and he is the source of all things, and our lives are lived for him. And there is one Lord, Jesus, the Anointed One, through whom we and all things exist. We have our existence in Christ. He is our everything. He is our source. He is our strength. He is our redemption. He is our everything. <clears throat> Um, verse seven, but now everyone, but not everyone has this revelation. In other words, they have come to know Christ. They've given their life to Christ or a follower of Christ, but they're still learning. They're still, um, growing in their, in their walk with the Lord. You know, when, when, when a baby's born, he don't, the baby doesn't come into this world and just begin to, to walk and to talk and to feed itself and to, I mean, you have to do everything for it, and it's no different in our spiritual walk. There's a there's a process. There's a there's a a, a, 
a progression in our walk in Christ. And so that's what Paul's talking about here. It's where he's getting. He said, we know that, um, let me, no, I missed it. For, but not everyone has this revelation. For some were formerly idolaters. In other words, some of, some of you had worshiped false gods. And you believed that it was a real God, and you, and you worshipped wholeheartedly. Um, who considered idols as a real, as real and living? That's why they consider the food offered to that God as defiled, and their weak conscience become in their weak consciences become defiled if they eat it. In other words, they don't have a clear conscious conscience if they eat something that's been offered to an idol. For them, it's a struggle because they 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 feel like it's already been offered. It's it's it represents their worship. It represents that that God is 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 an act of worship, and they were ingesting the food offered, and it defiles them. Um, and it said, and their weak consciences uh, become defiled if they eat it. Verse eight. Yes, we know that what we eat. Listen to what he's saying. Yes, we know that what we eat will not bring us closer to God. You are no better if you don't eat certain foods and no better if you do. It's not about, it isn't about what you eat that defiles the body. Jesus talked about that in the New Testament. It's not about um, what you eat. It's not what you ingest defiles your body. It's the sin in your life. It's the, the sin that you've unconfessed and unrepentant of that defiles us. Um, you are better if you, uh, you are no better if you don't. Okay, verse 9. But you must be careful that the liberty that you exercise in eating food offered to idols doesn't offend the weak believer or a weaker believer or a new believer or a, 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 a baby in Christ. Um, I think this, this verse is key to this whole chapter. This is what Paul's getting at. Um you must be careful that the liberty that you exercise in eating food offered to idols doesn't offend the weaker believer or the new believer. In other words, you may understand in your maturity a deeper truth that this really isn't, an idol really is nothing because there is only one God, our God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. There's only one God. And so Paul's telling them here in this verse be careful that your liberty, that the liberty you exercise of eating doesn't offend or cause someone to stumble in their walk with the Lord because they're not at that place. They're not matured into that place. It hasn't, their conscience hasn't been um, cleansed. They haven't got that revelation. For if a believer, for if a believer with a weak conscience sees you who have, who has a greater understanding Dining in an idol's temple, won't this be a temptation for him to violate his own conscience and eat food offered to idols? So, in effect, listen to what he's saying. So, in effect, by exercising your understanding of freedom, of freedom, you have ruined this new believer. Let that sink in. So, in effect. By exercising your understanding of freedom, by exercising your liberty, by exercising the freedom that you walk in, you've caused this new believer to stumble. You've caused this new believer to, to maybe turn from Christ, to, to struggle in their walk with the Lord because they saw you eating food that was offered up. Now, this is important what Paul says. You also... Listen to what he says in the second part of that verse, in verse 12. Wounding their conscience in this way, you also offend the anointed one. In other words, you also offend Christ. You also offend what? Verse 13, so I conclude that if my eating certain foods deeply offends my brother, causes him to stumble, causes him to question, because my... my my freedom, my liberty that I understand that this this meat that's been sacrificed really it really is nothing. But if it causes them to stumble, verse 13 says this. 
and hinders his advance in Christ, I will never eat it again. I don't want to be guilty of causing my brother or my sister to be wounded and defeated. If we could get a hold of this truth in the body of Christ, if we could get that truth in our lives, that it's not, yes, I'm free. I'm, I know, I understand um, the scriptures. I understand what's taking place. I understand that it's not really, you know, offered to an idol. It's not really a real God. There's no sight because our God is the one true God. He is the living God. And so I have that freedom. So to me, it's just, it's just a meal. It's just a meat. But if, if a new believer, if someone just comes to Christ and he's a new believer or she is a new believer in Christ and they see you in a place doing something that they struggle with, Paul said, it is better for me to go without than to be a stumbling block for my brother or sister. Even though in my in my conscience, I'm okay to do this. I, I'm clear to do this in my conscience. I don't feel guilt. I don't feel I don't feel condemned to, to not to do this. But he said, you know, if you if you exercise your freedom and it's causing your brother to stumble, then you have then it is a sin. You have not only offended that brother or sister, he said you have also offended the anointed one. So in our walk with the Lord, in our relationship with him, we have to consciously be aware of how we portray ourselves, how we, you know, consciously, consciously think. If I go, if I go into a bar and I'm sitting there drinking, as as a pastor, I'm, I'm. Let's say I'm in a bar and I'm at the bar and I'm I'm throwing a couple back. And someone who's just visited the church or someone that's that struggles with alcohol, someone that's had maybe they were an alcoholic, and they see me sitting there throwing back a beer or whatever it would be, and they thought it must be okay. And if they stumble, and they go back into their sin. Paul says, you have sinned and you have grieved and you have caused that person to stumble. You offended them and you have offended Christ because ultimately, ultimately you and I in our walk is to love the Lord your God. Love for our brother and our sister in their struggle. Paul said, I'd, I would never eat meat offered to an idol again. If it would cause, if it causes a brother to stumble. You see, Paul understood and he wants you and I to understand that our life isn't just about us. It isn't about me. My freedom and my liberty in Christ isn't just about me. It affects every person around me. It affects my family. It affects my friends. It affects my coworkers. What they see me do, even in my everyday life will affect how they see Christ, how they view Christ. If I'm so judgmental and critical and, and hateful and resentful and bitter and angry, that's not a good represent representation of who Christ is in me. And so I, if we don't get anything out of this, this passage, it could be summed up in this. It's not about what you know. It's not about your freedom and your liberty to do whatever you want to do. Because if, if, if within your freedom and your liberty, you cause somebody to stumble at the things of God, you have offended Christ. What a heavy weight that will be. Because of your actions, someone stumbled. Someone turned away from Christ to go back to the way things used to be. The question is this, even if I have the freedom to do, it is not beneficial. It is not always beneficial for me to do it. 
even if I have the liberty to do it, it's not beneficial for me to do it if it causes a brother or a sister to stumble and turn from Christ. In our walk with the Lord, we want to be pleasing to Him. And in being pleasing to Him, we need to walk in the Spirit. We need to minister one to another. We need to pray and be aware of what people see us doing. Now, we can't live our lives in, in pure, oh no, I can't do this in case someone sees it, or I can't do this. I mean, there's a level of freedom that we have that when people learn and they grow, they'll understand. And we have to lead them in that. That's why, there's, that's why discipleship, I think, is so important in our walk with God, with God and with Christ because you don't know coming. When you get first get saved, there's a lot of things you don't know, you don't understand. And I think as, as you and I, as more as people that are more mature in their, in their relationship with Christ, we're the ones that need to step up and help. Let me help you because of our love for that person, our, our compassion for them and their walk with the Lord. That's what, that's what Paul's getting at. It isn't about how much you know or how much freedom you have or how much liberty you have. It's how much you're affecting the kingdom of God, not only in yourself, but in other people. Let's pray. Thank you guys for joining us. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would quicken this word. Let it go and be rooted in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, that we might not sin against you, that we might be a, a vessel of honor for you, a building of your kingdom. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us. Look forward to seeing you next week. If you've missed any of the other videos, please go back and watch them and study along with us. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.